Hi, my name is Josh Winters. I'm the Agricultural and Natural Resources Extension Educator for Jackson County. And today we're gonna to be talking about leaf identification, using leaves to identify the different types of trees we have on our property. So knowing the types of trees that we have is the first step when developing a plan for our woodlands, whether as planning for a healthier woodlot, more ecological life, or maybe even a timber sale. You must know the different types of trees you have on your property. Through this video, I will introduce a different type of book that we can use to help us whenever we're trying to identify the different types of trees on our property. So this is a very helpful book booklet when trying to identify the different types of trees by their leaves. This book is called Leaf Identification Key to 88 Ohio Trees, and the author being Dave Apsley. He's a former extension specialist in our natural resources. And then Kathy Smith, she's our extension program director for the forestry. Illustrations were also done by Aaron Apsley. As we go into this book, I want you to take note of the back page. The back page has a measuring scale, zero to eight inches. This is gonna be very useful whenever we're actually measuring out in the field because many of our requirements ask whether certain types of leaves are below a certain inch. So it's best to always take our leaves to the back of the booklet and we can measure them out in the field. So at the first page, what we're gonna see is we're gonna see this chart. Whenever we look at this chart, we see broadleaf and we see conifers. So broadleafs are going to be those deciduous trees, those trees that lose their leaves throughout the year. Whenever we look at our conifers, they're going to be our evergreen trees. Those are our trees that will stay green throughout the year. And they're going to be more of our like spruce, our pine. They're going to be those type of trees. While our broadleaf, they're going to be more of our elms, our ash, our oak. Those are what they're going to be looking like. Other names for a broadleaf tree? can be hardwoods. Another name for a conifer tree can be our softwoods. So those are some different ways to identify which type of trees we have. Now, this chart is going to mainly focus on our broadleaf tree. This chart is mainly going to focus on our broadleaf trees. Whenever we look at our conifers, it recommends that we go to page 19 and to our book. And once we get to page 19, it would just have a whole list of the different amounts of trees and give us descriptions of them. So we can follow along and try to uh, eliminate which ones we do not have to figure out which trees that we do have for our conifers. For our broadleafs, they do get a little bit difficult. So that's what we're going to be going through here in a bit. The first thing that we need to do for our broadleafs is to identify which type of leaf pattern we have. So we have different types of patterns, including alternate, we have world, and we have opposite. So we have three arrangements, our arrangements being alternate, where our leaves are going to alternate different sides. We have our opposite, where they're going to be like a mirror, and they're going to be opposite of each other on each side. And we're going to have world. World's going to be where we have more than two coming in at one point all the way around the branch, kind of in a world pattern. So as we look at this, these are called nodes. Whenever we're looking at a branch that may not have a leaf anymore, we also see these nodes. These nodes will still be there. So even by a random stick that has no leaves on it, we can tell whether it's going to be an alternate branch, or we can tell whether it's going to be an opposite, or we can tell whether it's world. Now, a hint to Ohio trees is to remember that most of our trees that are opposite you want to think this phrase, mad buck. When we think of mad buck, we think of maple, ash, dogwood, or buckeye trees. Once we've identified the leaf pattern for the leaves, we want to identify whether we're looking at a simple or a compound leaf. So as we look at our simple leaves, our simple leaves are going to be this one up here on the top. It's going to be having a branch, and then it's just going to be one singular leaf attached to that branch. Now, as we look at our compound, our compounds are going to be a little bit different. So it's going to be one branch. It's going to stick on out. It's going to have leaflets on each side. So all these leaflets make up one whole compound leaf for the structure. As we look down here, compound leaves can be categorized in three different ways. We can have our first one here, which is called pinnate. We can have our second one here called palmate. We'll have our third one here called twice pinnate. So as we look at, once we've identified our simple or compound leaves, we need to understand whether it's going to be a broad leaf or whether it's going to be a medium to narrow leaf. So our broad leaves, whenever we start to look at them, they're going to be the same distance wide as they are tall. Whenever we look at our medium to narrow leaves, they're usually going to be about one and a half times the size 
tall than they are wide. So they're going to be much longer. Once we've identified whether it's going to be a broad or medium narrow leaf, we can then go down to determine whether it's going to be lobed or not lobed. Whenever we look at our lobe leaves, we think about whether they have points. So when we look down to this leaf down here, we see the different points that are sticking out. Whenever we see those different points, we call these lobes. So same way over here on our medium to narrow, when we come down here, we looked at our lobe leaves. So this one's gonna have multiple lobes coming off the side. So understanding that our lobes are gonna be our points and our non-lobes, whenever we look at stuff that's not lobed, it's going to have more of no points at all, or it comes to one point right here. Same thing with our opposite leaves. Our opposite leaves, our lobe one's gonna have multiple points that come off. Our non-lobes are gonna be the ones that point straight on out. Now we're gonna give you an example to have you run through it yourself to see if you can identify this leaf. So this leaf, this one's commonly known as a maple. Most of you probably understand that this is a maple, but we're gonna go through the process just to show you what it looks like and to show you what type of maple it is, if you can't tell already. So is this a conifer or is this a broadleaf? Well, this one's obviously a broadleaf. There's no pines, there's no needles. This is a broadleaf leaf. But when we look at it, is it alternate, world, or opposite? We can look down at this picture down here and we can see that they're attached at the same spot. So if this was a mirror, they'd be mirroring each other. So this is an opposite pattern. As we look at whether it's simple or compound, we look and we see one leaf going to one side. So this one is a simple leaf. As we look to see whether it's lobed or smooth, we look at it and this one's got multiple points coming off of it. So this one is a lobed leaf. So this is where we end up. And this tells us to go to page 17. So we'd go into our book and we'd see page 17. And page 17, this gives us a brief summary of what we just said. It's a broad leaf. It's an opposite. It's simple. It's got lobing. So now we need to identify some more information to get us down to our final spot. So as we look at our options, we have four options. So the first thing we need to do is look at option 1A. Leaf edges are fine toothed between the lobes. So whenever we're looking at our teeth, we wanna be very careful because whenever we look at the teeth, some teeth can be very small and that can make us think that it's going to be a smooth edge. But actually, if you look really close, you can see those little fine teeth. So making sure that we're being very careful when looking. In this picture, you cannot see, well, unless you've got really good eyes, I don't really have good eyes, uh, but you cannot see the teeth here. This one actually does have the teeth. Now, let's say for instance, this didn't have any teeth. We would go to 1B and 1B says leaf edges lack teeth. And then we would be looking under this category, but our leaf does have fine teeth between the lobes. So now we're looking at either a silver maple or a red maple. Now at this point, this one's pretty easy to identify because one, this is not, there's no red to it, but we're gonna go ahead and finish it out. So it says deep narrow sinuses between lobes, mostly, mostly five lobes, silverly pale, and the leaves turn yellow in the fall. But we can flip this over and we can see this is silver. It's got the same amount of lobes. So this is a silver maple. If we went down here, it would say leaf stems are often red. We don't see any red in this leaf stem, so we can eliminate it being a red maple. Let's try another one. So we've got this leaf right here. This one's a commonly known one as an oak. But let's go ahead and go through the process and see which oak is it. So it's a broad leaf. If we look at our leaf patterns, we can see that the leaves are alternating. So we're gonna be under the alternate side. It's going to be a simple leaf because there's only one leaf here. If we look down, would you classify this as a broad or would you classify it as narrow to medium? Well, if you look at this one, this one's a lot longer than it is. So this one's going to be a medium to narrow. Now, is this a smooth tooth or lobe leaf? This one has the points just like our maple did. So it's gonna be a lobe. So we're gonna go to page 13 right here. So we've went all the way from the top, all the way down to page 13. As we go to page 13, we have a lot of options here. So a lot of these will have a lot of options. So we have to read very closely to figure out which one it is. We know this one's not a sassafras. So we don't really have to worry about the sassafras part. It also doesn't fit the description up here. So the leaves not as above. So now we went from 1A to 1B because it's not a sassy for us. I'm gonna go to 2A, leaves with bristled tip lobes. That's 2A. Or the leaves have without bristles. 
on the tip of their lobes. Well, this one's hard to see, but we can actually look at it and we can see that there is no bristles. So we're going down to 2B. So everything up here is not it anymore. This all classified under 2A. So now we're looking at 2B. Everything underneath here, we will still follow. So we look at 6A, leaves with the shallow lobing or resembling large teeth. I don't really see any teeth here. If we go to lobing deeper, we see a deeper lobe right here. It goes really deep into the leaf. So we're gonna go to 6B. So everything under 6A is no longer relevant. It's not what we're looking for. We're over at 6B now. Now we've got three different options we have. We've got a post oak, a white oak, or a bur oak. If we look at 7A, because 6 to 7A, leaves are hairy. Well, if we look at our leaves right now, we can see the reflection. These are not hairy. So it's not gonna be our post oak. We're gonna go down to 7B. Leaves are not hairy beneath. Perfect, we are down to 7B. We're down to our two options. So now whenever we look at it, we can look at 8A. Leaves with seven to nine lobes with varying depths. Bark is light gray. And then if we look down here to 8B, we see the medium lobe. But it also says, if you look at the bark, the bark is dark. This is an opportunity where we can go off the leaf and we can look at its bark. So this is the bark of the tree where this leaf came from. So we used our leaf and now we're looking at our tree and we can identify this as a white oak. So as we go to this one, we're gonna do, we're gonna do another one here. We look at it, we have got a broad leaf. If we look really closely, We've got them alternating just slightly. So it may look opposite, but at first they're gonna have this alternating here. So these ones are actually gonna be an alternate, whether it's in a simple leaf or a compound, these are gonna be its leaflets. They're gonna go out. So this is gonna go to our compound section right over here. Now, when we look at it, is it gonna be pinnate, twice pinnate? Well, this one's pretty simple to see. There's only one, it's going to be our pinnate. So we'll go to page 15. At page 15, we see that we got our broadleaf, alternate, compound, pinnate. Now we go down through our process again. So leaves have more than 11 leaflets. Well, if we can take a quick look, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We're already over 11 leaflets. So it's going to be something down here under 2A. So we have black locust or we have honey locust. So as we look through it, we have... Leaflets are one to two inches. If we keep reading down, we can start seeing leaflets are one to two inches with tiny bristles, tips, or notches. Or leaflets are often less than one inch without bristles or notches. This one's going to be a honey locust. So whenever we look at this, it's going to be less than one inch. These are not very big. So if they're one to two inches, we'd be looking at black locusts, but these ones are less than one inch long. So this is gonna be our honey locust. Finally, we're gonna do a quick one with the conifers. So like we said, this is not a broadleaf, this is a conifer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go straight to page 19. So when we look at the conifer section, we have 1A, foliage is flat and scale-like. Whenever we look at this, this is not gonna be flat or scale-like. Foliage is needle-like, this looks like a little needle. So this one's going to be down under 1B. Whenever we look at 1B, we need to look and see whether needles are in bundles of two or more. Well, when we look at this, they're only going to be single. So we're gonna keep going down to 3B, where 3B says needles are individually attached, which is true. If we look at the needles, they're gonna be individually attached. For it to be 3A, it would need to have them all clumped together, which these are not. So we're under 3B now. We go down to 9A. Say needles are deciduous and they drop in the fall. So this is one where you might need to know a little background information on it, or they stay around all year. So for this one, this one will be under your guidance, but this one just for, for example's sake, this ones are gonna be throughout the whole year. So that takes us from 9A to 9B. So now we have two different options. We have an Eastern Hemlock or we have a Norway Spruce. If we look at it, our needles are gonna be short, to a quarter to three quarters inch, which these ones are. They're gonna be flat and they're gonna have dark green lines, which they do. So we can say this is an Eastern Hemlock. 
We can also look down to see and make sure that's not a Norway spruce by reading this description. And this description does not line up with our picture. So we can identify this as an Eastern hemlock. For more tree identification information, you can go to this website. For all tree identifications, visit u.osu.edu slash apsley.one slash tree ID. Our former colleague, Dave Apsley, has many tree identification videos with specific videos out in the woods to show you what they would look like. If you're interested in natural resources or woodlands programming, you can go to A Day in the Woods. This is also u.osu.edu slash apsley.one. A Day in the Woods is just now starting here in the May. It will run from May until October. It's going to be the second Friday of each month. And it's going to be out at the Vinton Furnace. If you have not attended one of these events, it's a great event. Thank you for coming to the video. And until next time, enjoy the woods. Ooh.